What's up, everybody? Thanks for rolling through. Thanks to Gcon for the raid. Uh, a couple days ago, people gave me this idea. I was I wanted to throw a tournament, but it didn't happen, obviously. But people gave me an idea to do a a recap of of 2021, right? Another another year in the in the filler arc of Marvel. Mike Low. All right, turn it up. Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. How's that sound? Thanks to all the sound engineers in the chat. Perfect. All right, we good. So I put together this this PowerPoint, right? To I know it seems like a kind of long year, and it seems like 2020 extended, but uh, a lot of stuff happened this year, believe it or not. And uh, it was a good year for, for Marvel in some ways, in other ways not so much, but mostly good. So here we go. Let's just jump right into it. January. Long time ago, now almost a year ago, Bill threw a tournament on Null DC, which at the time was kind of a, I mean, Null was a 2020 thing, but there had not been really many events on Null, right? Bill threw this awesome tournament that brought a lot of people back out, including Genghis, Combo Fiend, Clock. Krizzle won that tournament. Um, it was on Team 3 Arcade stream. This is a flyer for it. Pretty sick ass flyer. February. What happened in February? We got the Heartbreak Tournament. So I know like most of us were there, but I know a lot of people started playing the game or people just don't fucking remember what happened, you know, because it's a long year, like I said. Heartbreak Tournament. This started the whole single elimination thing, as I recall. It was meant to, hearts were meant to be broken and. Uh, <laughs> What better way to break hearts than if you lose once, you're you're done. So ironic actually won that tournament. Shout out to him for winning that tournament. Andy Doom. It's a theme we'll be seeing throughout this presentation. Freaking uh, ironic and Andy Doom. When I looked over the placements, ironic and Andy Doom were placing really high in every tournament, which you will see. Pasadena getting third. Very, very rare for Pasadena to not win a PSN tournament. Roundhouse got fourth. And a four-way tie for fifth with myself, Charlie Goblin, Mad Boo, and Thrilla. No, Thrilla. That was another tournament. All right. Moving on. That's a flyer for that one. Pretty sick flyer. Bandwidth beatdowns, February. They had a tournament, a low-tier tournament. This is when people were complaining, as usual, about top tiers being way too overdone. People go, oh, you know, we should throw a, a, a low-tier tournament. So bandwidth beatdowns answered the call with a low-tier tournament, which all the top tiers were banned. Um, so it was a good showcase. I actually watched it at, at the time. I watched it. Um, Roundhouse still won that one somehow with... I forgot what his team was like, Juggernaut and something else, playing in, a, in the only way that Roundhouse could play. Um, so Roundhouse won that one. <laughs> Moving on to March. There was a PSN tourney that, that, um, that kicked off in March. Bill once again stepping up to run this tournament. Pasadena won that one, followed by Thrilla and Bill in second and third place. Uh, what's, what was cool about these tournaments is that they went back to the um, to the old school format of of paying to enter a tournament. You know, back in the day, you had to pay to enter the tournament, and that money went towards a pot, which is exactly what this one did. So there was that. Pasadena, Pasadena started his very dominant run about of PSN tournaments around this time in March. March sixteenth, Justin posts uh, a tier list of his ratio system. Now this changed the game and, and, and now I might say this for some other stream because the ratio system at the same time, it gives like lesser played characters shine, right? Which is good. Um, you want to see players that are characters that you don't usually see, but um, it, it definitely brought a new, a, a new kind of mindset and a new player base to this game. He uploaded this tier list. Here's a tier list right here. So basically, for those of you who don't know, you have seven points. Um, so you can pick the top tiers if you want, but if you do pick a top tier, like Sentinel, 
you get stuck with two more points, which means your other two will have to be like some sorry ass characters like Servot and Dan, which sucks, right? So if I were to pick Strider, I couldn't pick Doom because that's eight points right there. So I'd have to pick like Strider and then, you know, Wolverine and, you know, Captain America or some shit. So that was this. So, you know, I'll, I'll cover this later, but this got a bunch of new players into the game because, yeah, you know, for from a top tier player perspective, I can still pick my shit, but the rest of my team, in a team-based game, the rest of your team is crippled, right? So this is kind of a big deal. Moving on. There's a bandwidth beatdown tournament in March. So a lot of stuff happened in March. Uh, Chaos won with Joey Ball and... And Hypnotic Mind taking second and third. This is another great uh, NYC Furby tournament. Another tournament in March. The Lucky Dude tournament. This one was packed. This shit was 34 entrants. And what was unique about this tournament is that there was a random seed drawing, right? So if you missed it, Roundhouse picked the names from a hat to see who would play who. Roundhouse picked Chaos. I clipped it on this channel. Roundhouse picked Chaos, and he doomed. He sealed his fate right there. Um, it was first to two. The weird part about this tournament, um, I'm glad this didn't catch on, but Roundhouse was insistent on a full screen start at the opener, which was really hard to enforce, and it wasted a lot of time because people aren't really used to the full screen start, right? And people were all making like suggestions that, oh, you know, MSP is going to not do so well. Etc. But Chaos actually won that tournament with Bill and, and again Andy Doom, Andy Doom placing. So there's that. Fix my mic real fast. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm glad that I'm glad that didn't catch on anymore any more than it had to. Moving on. That's the flyer for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was on the mic on that yelling, full screen. Not not that great of an idea, but you know it was. At the very least, it was it was so we could see what would happen. You know what I mean? Like we saw that it didn't work firsthand. That should that's a flyer for that one. April. Anachronist curse uh, got COVID um, in, in April, so Roundhouse and I um, threw a tournament to raise funds for him. Single e elimination, which was something that carried over from February, right? We just kept doing it. Andy Doom won that tournament with Roundhouse and Ironic in second and third. So Andy Doom, for those of you who forgot or weren't there at the time, Andy Doom did win in place at a bunch of tournaments. All right, um, another thing that happened in 2021 that was huge was um, unfortunately the owners of Moss Systems uh, passed away in an accident. Um, so the community answered by organizing a 24 hour stream for them um, to raise funds for the, the family because they still had kids um who are now without parents so we did a 24-hour stream uh that included me big weed uh lazy reaper go for broke thrilla matrix ruin turtle power and josh 360 so i organized this and it was uh it was a lot of work and i'm very grateful to all the streamers who stepped up especially during the weird ass time like the 2 a.m 3 a.m um slots to stream and i it's a shame that it's not uploaded on YouTube. I think the whole thing should be uploaded on, on to YouTube in, in, <laughs> in one big thing. Um, but some highlights from that. Um, Matrix actually got Yipes out to play on his stream for that one. That was sick. Um, and Turtle Power threw in like grudge matches for, for, from Texas. Um, and Josh360 tried to show us how to skip the Iron Man Infinite and actually didn't really teach us anything. But uh, <laughs> shout out to John. He, we came to the conclusion that there was no way out. Uh, so there's that. Go for Broke was, I think he was one of the first ones to uh, sample the replay function on Null, which was a huge thing that we got this year too. Yeah, rest in peace to them. But Scanline City, if you don't know, Scanline City is taking over the Moss Systems um, um, brand and will release new Moss sticks in early, early in 2022. So Moss will live on. That was a flyer for that one. Next. Um, my memory's a little hazy around here. There's a Cinco de Mayo tournament in May on... Um, it was for, it's for Wednesday Night Fights. I do not remember who won. 
I remember I lost to Asmode in Pasadena, so I got salty and stopped watching that tournament. So I don't actually remember who won. But yeah, that was an old DC Bear tourney. June. July. My mind is just blank for this. I think this this is when like it was summer and, and Marvel kinda uh Marvel kinda died down a little bit. So I got nothing for June and July. So if, if you guys remember something that happened in these two months, because I, I got nothing again, uh hit me up. <laughs> and we'll add it to the slide. Alright, so this is where it gets interesting, guys. August. So on August 2nd, Maximilian Dude starts the free MVC2 hashtag. Uh, to sum that up to people who don't know, um, is basically he's basically saying that MVC2 had to be stuck in digital jail for over 10 years, which is true. I mean, we have it on PS3, you had to jailbreak it, or it was online on Null or Fightcade. Um, so the movement begins in early in early August right and then coming straight off of that gcon throws his first null dc tournament 16 players um and and tree fitty won that tournament tree fitty not known for th thrax or winning and somehow pulls it off king tree fitty won that tournament proving Earning the king to the King Tree Fitty name. He beat Dave. Toinkos got third. Toinkos, we still don't know who he is, but it's all good. That's that's a different topic. Um, but yeah, nice tournament. Shout out to Tree for winning that one. And then right off of that, we had a free MBC2 PSN tournament. This one was packed, man. This is 32 man bracket. Um, completely just completely booked tournament. Pasadena won with Ironic in second and Krizzle in third. Krizzle not even really playing on PS3 somehow shows up and gets third. So good good stuff to Krizzle right there. All right. September. Now, we all know what happened in September. This is a big month. The match of the millennium. The Super Bowl of Marvel happened in September. Early September. I think it was like the 6th or something like that. This match had been in the making uh, for a while. Roundhouse had been saying on the stream he wasn't scared of Justin. That he was, you know, I don't remember exactly what he said, but for a while he'd been saying like Justin like was the least scary, and that he didn't think Justin was 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 the goat and all that stuff. And then so Justin came in came into this chat and challenged him to this match. Um, yeah, it was huge. I don't remember the exact viewership because I was on the mic at the time, but I think it was like it. I think it was like a thousand. I want to say a thousand live viewers. Um live and then it got locked behind a paywall afterwards and then the youtube upload got like forty thousand views but yeah this is huge exposure for marvel right we had people who didn't even play marvel watching this match coming out of the woodwork we had old players coming out to talk shit we had all the goons here in the stream all the time tuning in um it was a huge it was just a it was over 2k okay yeah it was over 2k there we go People saying three to four K. See, I had I had no idea how many viewers there were. Yeah, it was it was crazy. It was, it was, it was the Super Bowl. So many eyes on that match, and you know it was like I said, huge exposure for the game. And actually, it actually um, led to Roundhouse becoming Twitch partner off of that. Not because of it directly, I don't think, but I think because of like the viewership he got from that, you know, and the hype that Roundhouse had. Coming off of that, he became a Twitch partner. All right. That was a flyer for that one. Looks like a, a UFC flyer. Roundhouse giving away his full name in the flyer. Good stuff, Roundhouse. Moving on. We're almost at the end. PSN Monthly, September 26th. Bill actually won that tournament, ending Pasadena. This one was big because Pasadena had been streaking. Um, I don't remember how many tournaments he won, but I remember... Pasadena was winning pretty much every PSN tournament around this time. Bill clutches it out this one. I think the, the, the grand final set was like first to four, and it was like 4-3 or something like that. Ironic and Andy Doom once again placing very well. So if you learn anything about Ironic and Andy Doom, know that they place consistently through every, every tournament this year online, right? Sometime in September, I don't know. I don't know this date. 
but ratio mode goes live within within no dc bear um and basically it was a special mode within the game that would would enable you to play other people in that mode right so that was a new thing 20 20 something years later we get a new mode within the online game it just brings more people out because you know like people play low tier you know, some people play top tier and there's mixed tier there's ratio so you know however you want to play the game you find other people easily who want to play the game the same way that that, that you do hence why i have top tiers only in my in my name on null because that's how i personally enjoy like, <laughs> playing the game october gcon stuff throws another banger second null dc tournament for gcon 12 players extra chunky wins that tournament go for broke with this surprising showing in this tournament i remember go for broke really surprised me um by getting second in this tournament dave again placing high with a third place shout out to dave yeah go for broke was on on like his in in good form for this tournament all right this is a big one because you know when if you if we just talked about like grudge mat like marvel is, is based on is a big part of Marvel's grudge matches, right? And this one was special because these were two new school players who were facing off. And both these dudes started playing like last year, right? And for them to step up and face each other in this grudge match in October was, was kind of a big deal. And if you missed it, they were like, they had to record like um, clips of them talking shit to each other before the match. And Big Weed was talking a lot of trash. I know it, it, it wasn't like him talking trash for the sake of talking trash. It was like, it was like for the culture, you know, for the hype. So with that said, Big Weed showed up. I think Manny won like 15 to one or something like that. I don't even remember the score, but yeah, that's all you need to know. Manny won that one convincingly, very, very convincingly. We might see the sequel to that in uh, 2022. Who knows? Big Weed will have to hit the, hit the lab big time for that one. That was a flyer for that. All right. October 27th. Can't believe this is even a slide, but here we are. Uh, October 27th, Pokemon of all people, joins <laughs> the free MVC2 movement. Crazy, right? She tweet, she hits, she hits us with this tweet, hashtag free MVC2. And as you can see, this is a big deal. And I know she, um, she ended up, I heard she owned it. She ended up owning some part of Evo or something, but yeah. Shout outs to her. I mean, anyone, anyone with uh, who who could ha who has her reach and influence tweeting that it can only help us, right? All right, October sometime we got rollback on Fightcade, right? So this was a huge deal. This this was cool because we got rollback on PC and Null was Null was not rollback until like around the same time. But the fight kid rollback is pretty smooth. Yeah, it drops it drops inputs and stuff like that. But for me, I've been playing that on there a lot, and it's a really great way to play online. It's easy to it's easy to use. You just like you like download two things, and you know there's an influx of new players. So if you guys haven't tried out fight kid, definitely try it out. Um, you might not like it. I got used to it. I didn't like it at first. But yeah, this started a whole thing with with Tylock and and them, which we will not talk about right now. <laughs> That's a long conversation. Sometime in October, this happened. Uh, a lot of new players came onto Fightcade. So if you log into Fightcade at any time, it reminds me of honestly, it reminds me of the early days of PS3. When PS3 first came out and you could log on and find competition pretty much any time, it was just a matter of whether or not that competition was actually good. So there's that. Sometime in October. I don't know the exact time. All right, November. Sumaiti returns to Marvel. Now Sumaiti had had um had a long absence from the game over 10 years. Um and in his absence there there spawned a wave of like tribute slash knockoff names. Um Ku Mighty, Wu Mighty, Su Whitey, Sean Mighty, uh Su Matty, Drew Mighty. You think I'm trolling, but I'm really not. These are all actual. This this shows the freaking influence of of Sue, right? There were a lot of them. That's not even that's not even a concise. That's not even like a real complete list. 
right? There are other mighties that uh, I didn't, I, I don't know about. Who knows? And Sue definitely didn't know about them because I was on Thriller Stream when Sue showed up to play, and I was like, "How do you feel about all these people ripping off your name?" And Sue was just like, "What people?" And then I opened up the chat at Thriller's house. I was like, "Look at all the people in the chat." And then I showed him all the Mighties, and he was tripped out, like, whoa, I, didn't, I, didn't, I had no idea I had that kind of influence, but he did. So Sue Mighty came back. Um, he was at, you know, he, he was playing for the weekend that CYF was here. Uh, if you missed the stream, here's a, here's a still from that stream of Sue talking about the old days with Duck, who was listening intently to Sue. That's me doing the Doom Infinite in, in, that, in that cut. All right. So also in November, I don't know the exact date, Airbrush King launches free mvc2.com. So this website was, it took a really long time to build. I don't know the exact, but it was a long time in the making. So uh, he, he launches this website, which basically is meant to be a hub for this hashtag. Um, and Roundhouse is listed as an influencer in there. So if, if you learn anything from that, it just goes to show you that, uh, that um, you can be a Marvel player and be listed as an influencer on a website. Cool stuff. Nice looking website. You do have to like sign up to use it, but that's just like SRK or whatever else. All right, which brings us to December, which is where we are now. CYF throws this really great event. So Filipino Marvel has been known for um, playing on low damage, right? So we've kind of always, and I talked about this when I was on the mic with them. I was like, we've kind of always like not really paid attention to them because the matches are really long and boring and etc. cetera. Um, but they actually have been playing on standard damage for a few years now. And so they ran this first to 50 North versus South. It was a great showcase of all the talent, talent over there. Um, the score was 50 to 30 Team North. That matches on YouTube if, if you want to check it out. Um, I commentated it along with Pro Mill Kid James. Um, but yeah, it was cool to see them playing on, on standard damage. Nick, Nick, it's true. If you, I try to watch some old school matches from there and is. It's, complete, it's a completely different game because Strider just doesn't die when you touch him. He's trapping you forever. Chip damage still chips the same. Like, yeah, it's not, it's just weird, man. And the cool part for me was seeing how, like, they couldn't break their habits from the old damage system. Like, MSP players in particular would call Psylocke when she has no life left. I mean, I mean, people will always do that. But they, like, emphatically called Psylocke because she wouldn't die. Yeah, Chip does the same damage, so Strider Doom is actually very, very good. Because Strider won't die if you touch him, um, and he'll just keep trapping you. This was a flyer for that. Really nice flyer. It was at Gamepad Lounge. It was an in-person event. We didn't have very many in-person um, events this year. We had like some SoCal and New York had some like sessions, but there weren't not really any like tournaments or whatever. So again, 2021, more or less an extension of, of 2020. And so now the end of 2021, they appointed a new GM for Evo. So we had left Evo for dead pretty much in the wake of what had happened. But they 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 actually appointed um Rick, who is the com event director for Combo Breaker. I actually have never been a Combo Breaker, but everyone who has been has just raved about it, how awesome it is. So that indicates really good things for Marvel, in my opinion, because if the guy who did Combo Breaker, who was like, had become like, in the years up to the pandemic, I remember Combo Breaker. Um, Combo Breaker had been like, Remember in 2019, I think it was, there was a, it was a big showing from Marvel Combo Breaker and there was like word on the street about Combo Breaker being the next spot to go to for MVC2, right? And I remember a bunch of West Coast people went out, like Andy Doom went out there, uh, World Machu went out there, you know? So Combo Breaker 24-hour venue 
all those good things, right? So it just leaves us on a question mark. Will Evo, okay, will Marvel return to Evo? Of course it will. Not of course it will, but it's likely that it will. And how will Marvel return to Evo? What's up, everyone? Thank you for checking out that video. Um, stay tuned for the extended cut, which is on its way. And also be sure to follow and subscribe to all the streamers I mentioned um, in that video. And stay tuned for, for great MVC2 content going into 2022.